Today he continues this most important teaching, which will help you learn to experience the presence and power of God in your own life and enable you to minister effectively to others. The anointing of the Lord, which we call the power of the Lord, is found hidden in the presence of the Lord. Now let me explain. Look at me all of you, please. Ever look, right here, right here. The presence of the Lord and the power of the Lord are not the same. God's presence is not God's power and God's power is not God's presence. We mix it up. We call the presence power and the power presence and don't know which is which. But you must understand that the presence of the Lord is that which is abiding and eternal. And the presence of the Lord never leaves you unless you reject Him willfully knowingly. The presence of the Lord is the same as His glory. The presence of the Lord is the same as His person. When we say the presence of the Lord, we mean the nature of God. We mean the heart of God. We mean the person of God. Remember that Moses who saw the power of God in Egypt, came to the Lord one day and said, Show me your glory now. In Exodus 33 he said, Show me your glory. I want to see your glory. He had already seen God's power. Now he was saying, I want to see your glory. God came and revealed His glory in Exodus 34. And when God revealed His glory, He revealed Himself. Beginning at verse 5, you can read this for yourself. God began to reveal Himself and said, The Lord, the Lord is gracious, merciful, long-suffering. God began to reveal His nature when He said, And that will, will by no means justify the wicked. God revealed His justice. God revealed His nature. So when we talk about the presence of the Lord, we're talking about the nature of the Lord. Remember what the scripture says in Psalm 103 verse 7. He made known His ways unto Moses, His acts unto the children of Israel. Israel knew God's power. Moses knew God's heart. Now, when it comes to the presence of the Lord, it's His heart. It's His nature. It's Himself. It's His person. Now the scripture tells us in Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 4 that within that presence, within that glory is found God's power. Now there's something very amazing about this. In Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 3, it says God came from Timan, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens. The earth was full of His praise. His brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of His hand and there was the hiding of His power. God's power hidden right inside the glory. Is anybody listening? Are you listening? God's power hidden right within His glory. Now people of God, when the presence of Jesus becomes real to you, nobody has to tell you. Because the minute Jesus becomes real to you, something will happen to you. Just what happened to Moses will happen to you. Exodus 34, 29 says he lost sight of himself. What the presence of the Lord will do for you is one thing. And if that one thing doesn't happen, it's not the real presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord will not awaken your feeling, nor stir your emotions. The presence of God stills the soul and cancels you. God's presence does not stir you. 
God's presence does not get your emotions all stirred up. That's the power of God that does that to you. But what the presence of God does, it stills the soul. When the presence of Jesus becomes real, the end result will be the cancellation of self. Moses said in Exodus 34, 29, the scripture says, he wished not that his face had shone. The minute the presence of God came real, became real, what happened? Moses disappeared. Moses wished not. He wished not. What happened to Adam, gentlemen? When the presence of God left, he said, I'm naked. As long as the presence of God is there, people are not aware of themselves. But the second the presence of God is lifted, people notice self. So the presence of self is the absence of Jesus. And the presence of Jesus is the absence of self. It's just that simple. So when Jesus is real to you, you're not. Your reality disappears in His reality. Anybody understands that? Put your hand way up high. All of this, right? That's what the presence of God does. Now, when the presence of Jesus becomes real to us, and the presence of God becomes real to us in worship, in prayer, and in Bible study, when you sit and read the scripture alone, quietly, as you read the scripture slowly, the Lord reveals himself often through his word. At times he reveals himself through prayer. As you're still in the presence of the Lord. Other times God reveals himself through worship. Now, often in our meetings, God's presence is revealed as we worship. Now there's a moment, as I'm worshiping the Lord, maybe you've noticed it, maybe you've not noticed it, but I will look to my staff and often I'll just point to the staff and this is the sign to my staff that I'm in. I, I, I've developed a way to let them know I'm in. Because as, we're, as, as we are worshiping the Master, there, there comes a moment when that crowd is lost in the presence of God. There comes a precious moment when people are just so lost they can't even talk. The choir begins to sing Alleluia. And the people begin to bless and worship Him with such precious worship. You see the tears streaming down their cheeks everywhere. When the presence of Jesus becomes real, people just don't know what to say anymore. Even their prayer becomes... They, they, they don't even know what to say. They don't know what to pray. Suddenly there comes in such a, such a reality that people just stand in awe of the Master. At which moment I will just do this. And Cheryl plays this. And when she does, the staff moves. For they know he is about to do something he does every single time. And what I do at that moment... Thank you, Cheryl. Cheryl begins to play Jesus all glorious. And the minute she begins to play, the staff know. They know this is the time he's about to release his anointing. But there's something I do on the platform. And this one thing is the most difficult thing to explain. Because this is how the power is released. You must understand what I'm talking about. If you want God to use you, you must understand what I've been talking to you about. That the power of the Lord and the presence of the Lord are not the same. That the presence of the Lord is that abiding presence 
while the power of the Lord is that which comes on you for a reason and a season, the presence of the Lord stills the soul, the power stirs the soul. The presence causes you to be, and the power causes you to do. The presence is that which literally nourishes your life, but it is the power that nourishes others through your life. There's a big difference between both. You must understand the presence is for you, the power is for somebody else. God's power is not for you. You are simply a vehicle used by God to touch somebody's life. The presence of the Lord There is something mysterious about it. Do, do you remember when the Lord was walking on the Sea of Galilee, ladies? And as he's walking, he made them think he was going to keep walking. Do you remember on the road to Emmaus? He's walking with the two disciples. And they came to the parting of a way, and he made them think he's going to keep walking. It's almost like at times, if I may just say it, and I pray the Lord will help me, I feel him passing by. It, 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 it's no more than 10 seconds. I've never known. Greg, I have never known that moment to last more than 10 seconds. And if I miss that 10 seconds, I miss the whole service. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Otto Roberts told me years ago, he said, he said, the, he, he, he said the Lord in ministry will, will come to you or pass by you. It's up to you what you do with it. And so, it's almost like you feel him just walking by, but he's looking for you to pull him. This scripture explains it better than I can say it. Listen carefully. Deuteronomy 32, 13 says, and this is for somebody right here that needs it. He made him ride on the high places of the earth. The high places of the earth, gentlemen, are where the presence of Jesus is very real. Where Jesus becomes so real to you. Now, when that happens, and this is where it gets a little difficult to explain, Jesse. When that happens, you feel a pulling away. You feel as though the Lord is pulling away and you have to pull him back. You say, how? It says this, he made him ride on the high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the fields. In those high places is the wealthiest presence you'll ever experience of the Lord. And then it says he made him suck listen honey out of the rock in those moments of the presence of the Lord his word becomes richer than any other time. His voice becomes crystal clear. That's what that honey is. But then something else happens and he made him suck oil out of the flinty rock. Now what that means is this. I have experienced the road to Emmaus in every service. I experienced that in every service. It's God's nature to hide. It's God's nature to pull away from us. He does not allow himself to be revealed for too long. There's a hiding side of God and you almost have to Please forgive me for, your, for, for using that, that word, but I don't know what other word to use. You, 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 you have to pull him towards you, urging him. You see his nature throughout the scriptures. They urged him to stay. Even the angels have that same nature of God. Ron, have you ever known the Lord to do that with you? Yeah. You, you know, there, there, there are times when in prayer... He becomes real for a second and pulls away and you think you've done something wrong. No, no, no. When that happens, my dear brother, 
He's letting you taste where you're going if you want it. And he's looking for you to reach and pull him towards you. And if you know how to do that, brother, let me tell you something. You'll go to places you've never been to in your life. This is what happened on the road to Emmaus. When they urged him to stay, their eyes opened. What would have happened had they, had they not urged him? They would have missed that whole revelation of the Christ. What would have happened had Jacob not urged him to stay? He, he would have lost his transformation as Israel. What would have happened had, had Samson's parents not urged the angel, please stay, don't you go away till we come back? Been no Samson. Anybody listening? God wants to be urged. God wants to be sought. God wants to be longed for. He longs to be longed for. And He seeks to be sought by men. That's why He said, Seek me with all your heart. He is not far from any one of us. In those meetings, I literally feel this, and, and I don't know how else to describe it. Watch this, please, watch this, watch this, watch this. Here is the presence of the Lord, not the power. Big difference. The presence of God does this. Comes towards you, goes away from you. If you know how to urge Him, there will come a moment He will be overwhelmingly real to you. And you urge Him through worship. When the presence of Jesus becomes so real to every one of us, the Lord is looking for you at that moment to siphon the anointing, to surrender. It begins with surrender. The anointing is released as we surrender to the presence of Jesus. We don't surrender to surrender, we surrender to the Lord. And when we surrender to the Master, there will be a moment when His power will fall so strong, every part of your body will feel it. And there is those few minutes between the presence and the power when you will move into quietness and stillness almost to the place you can't talk and at that moment when you yield it takes only just seconds to yield when you yield the atmosphere changes from quietness to a mighty wind you go from a breeze to a storm in 60 seconds because when the power of God comes there is no stillness there is no quietness. There's a roar of power. And suddenly people are healed. Delivered. Set free. It is at that moment in our crusades and meetings that people literally, the ushers begin running down the aisles as people begin jumping out of wheelchairs everywhere. What happens? There is a release of power. It was released as one man. <laughs> Siphon the anointing. Do you understand that? May the Lord give you that ability to surrender in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and ask Him. Lord, give them the ability to surrender. Lord, every one of these precious saints has known your presence. But now I pray, enable them to surrender to your presence. Enable them to surrender to your presence, that your power must flow and will flow in Jesus' mighty name. The Word of God commands, be filled with the Spirit. Paul the Apostle in Ephesians says to the church, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. You heard this teaching today on the anointing. I know your heart is stirred. But remember that the power of God belongs to those who are filled with the Spirit. And today I'm going to pray that God will again fill you with His power. When you see a sail ship on the ocean, 
the wind moves the sails and the ship is moved. The word filled in the Greek doesn't mean uh, like a glass full. It means like when the sails of a ship are filled with wind, there's action. Be filled with the Spirit because the infilling will take you from bondage to liberty, from emptiness to fullness, from where you are to where God wants you to be. And God will use you. And this is God's will for you today. For God wants to empower you and to use you. Father, I pray today that every person watching will be filled afresh with your spirit. I pray today that every empty vessel will be filled afresh, empowered again. Use that one, I pray, in Jesus' wonderful name. You are looking for willing vessels to use. We offer our vessel. We give you our lives. We surrender to you now. And I pray, dearest Jesus, empower that one calling on your name. Bring them into liberty. And yes, Lord, bring them into your high places where they might experience your mighty power in Jesus' mighty name and heal that body. Lord, if there be any sick, heal them right now. Remove that bondage, that affliction from their life. In Jesus' most awesome name I pray. Amen and amen. God wants to use you. You just saw a portion of a 